Welcome back to LDF Designs. In today's video, I am going to show you how I do a smooth surface of encaustic. A lot of my work, I have a lot of texture and different types of things on the panels or on my surfaces to create a lot of rich texture. Uh, but I do know how to make a smooth surface also. So I decided to do some experimenting with some of Ampersand's different types of panel boards that they have out there. In this case, I have little five by five aqua boards and I'm starting off simply by using some gouache paints, which is a kind of an intense watercolor paint. And I'm just creating some designs on these panels with the watercolor paint. So I spend a lot of time painting these in this video and don't have a whole lot to say about what I'm doing. I just, I have some uh, watercolor pa uh, paint in this travel case. And then I also had some gouache paints that were in tubes that I got at a flea market. And I have that, those over on the plate, just mixing the colors and painting intuitively to create some designs on the surface. Because these panels are created uh, to take a lot of different liquid or they handle the watercolor very well, they're a very uh, wondrous, luxurious surface to paint on. And I basically am just trying to add some different colors, create some depth in the colors. And I wanted to leave some larger, lighter areas open. The encaustic should go over this just fine. I'm not exactly sure what they treat the panel, I'm sorry, the surface of the panel with. Um, I do know that sometimes just a straight up acrylic dress gesso can be a little bit problematic with the encaustic, um, which is often why I'm using the different things to put on top of these surfaces. But in this case, I'm gonna cover most of it with this, with this water paint and then just gonna put the encaustic right over the top of that. So I did a little bit of the painting off camera as well, um, but I decided I wanted to really kind of accentuate those lines that I initially created. And so I took some of my darker colors that I have between the two different palettes there and mixed them up and started to go over some of those lines that I had created, just continuously blending those in with my fingers or the brush until I created a nice shadowy dark line. Thank you. 
You may have noticed too, I did tape off the backs of these panels. When I'm working with the encaustic, I do find sometimes that it spills over the edges, and I was trying to keep the backside of the panels as encaustic free as possible, so I did put a bunch of uh, painter's tape on the back of those trying to protect the panels. So if that's something that's important to you, sometimes I get excited and I get going and just get right in there and forget to tape up my backs. So sometimes the back or the bottoms of my work are pretty neat and then other times they're not um, but just a tip always remember to cover that section up if you are wanting to protect it I did speed this video up quite a bit. I do know there's just a lot of me painting and some of you out there do enjoy watching that process and some of you do not and that's perfectly fine. So uh, I do have some work with some stencils coming up here shortly and of course I do end up going ahead and working with the encaustic and some pan pastels. So if you can just hang in there with me you'll see where these go. So I worked them quite a bit, the panels off camera, and then went ahead and pulled out one of my stencils. I usually like to use these little makeup wedges to do my stenciling. However, when you're dealing with a watercolor or any water, please note that they do pick up the water pretty quickly, and once they become super soaked with that, they will not transfer the color quite as well. I was going for a little bit of a less intense stencil work, so um, I had to kind of work a little bit to get the the color just right and to get the color to transfer because the sponge got pretty wet there in the beginning At this point I wouldn't wanted to go ahead and start warming the panels and I tried using a pick tool to see if I could scrape make some scrape marks or lines into the color paint but that didn't exactly work or it didn't pull the paint off like I thought it was so I went ahead and grabbed my pencil and made some marks with just some graphite and just trying to create a little more texture and interest on the surface of the panel even though it's not a raised texture, it's a visual texture. So then I'm gonna go ahead and warm the panels and get them prepped to apply the encaustic. Because I was going for a smoother surface of encaustic, I was trying to keep the brush from overlapping too much as I put the different strokes of encaustic down. Now it's not the end of the world if those overlap. Um, the blowtorch as I fuse those will go ahead and blend that line, but just again trying to create a smoother surface, being conscious of how much I'm applying, trying to make it a, a lesser amount, and also trying not to overlap the edge line as much as I can. Because I wanted to keep the encaustic as clear as possible, I only applied two or three coats, and then I let that cool pretty significantly. And at this point, I'm just taking some of my pan pastels and going over a few of the areas with a similar color, just trying to highlight the color and again, create a little more depth of color. Wow. 
Once your pan pastel is uh, on the surface, you do want to give it a very light fuse. Depending on what kind of look you're going for, if you apply the pan pastel a little bit thicker and you then fuse it, it will crackle. It'll give you a little bit of a crackle effect. And if that's something that you want to do, it's a fantastic way to get that look. Um, but if you're not wanting to create that, then you want to apply the pan pastel in a lesser amount and then you want to be really light handed with your fuse. I applied some color in some areas and decided I didn't like it as much and took a paper towel with just a little bit of the vegetable oil and was able to just take that pan pastel right back off of the surface. I had not fused it yet. So again, it, it works. The vegetable oil is a great way to remove things from the surface also. So I'm getting ready to use a tool made by We Are Memory Keepers. It's a foil quill pen and it another artist had told me about that, Kelly Smith, and she um, she uses this tool a lot with her acrylic paintings and I thought it would be a really great thing to work with the encaustic as well. So I don't use it very often so I'm not very practiced with it, um, but it plugs in with a USB cord the little tip heats up and then you can heat transfer different things to the surface of your uh, piece of art. So at this point I'm just kind of adding a little bit of the foil transfer the gold and I do kind of clean this up a little bit later and um, I will have pictures of these pieces over on my Instagram account as always. Thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't given me a like or subscribe please go ahead and do that now.